So we're going to start seated. And this lesson, we'll do a little bit of shoulder and neck releasing. We'll do some pelvic stabilization and releasing, including some psoas work and some piriformis work. And we're going to start seated. You'll need a blanket or something like a towel underneath you. And I'd like you to spend a moment just sitting upright through your spine, feeling for that balance between your tailbone and your pubic bone, front to back until you're equally weighted between the front and the back. And once you have that, your leg bones should be able to soften. And, and before we even really start the practice, I'd like you to take your thumbs to the crease between your leg and your pelvis. And you're not going to push down through your thumbs. You're just going to lightly find that crease and wrap your thumbs a little bit away from each other. So it's like you're helping your upper thigh bone, the femur head, to externally rotate within the socket. Of course, you're not actually doing that, it's just an energetic thing. But that ropey muscle under your thumbs, you're becoming aware of it, and it's desire to hold you up. And you're just inviting it to soften. It might take a moment to feel for that softening and relaxing of the psoas system. And once you feel that, go ahead and let your spine hold you instead of your hips. So your spine grows a little taller. The pelvic floor might even wake up a little bit more. And the shoulders, you'll notice, will actually relax away from the ears. And once you have that, you can release your thumbs, bring your left arm straight out in line with your shoulder. Turn your palm to face up so you can feel that external rotation of your left arm bone. Wrap your right fingertips around your upper arm, holding the arm in place. As you reach your fingertips forward, pull your shoulder head back. So there's a lengthening of the arm forward as you pull it back into the body like it could move in both directions. And those right hand, fingers are really holding the arm in place. So you're holding the tricep moving downward. Turn your palm to face down. Turn your palm to face up. And we'll do this a few times. So you're energetically reaching the arm in both directions, fingertips forward, shoulder head back. And then you're just pronating and supinating, basically. You're turning your palm to face up, turning your palm to face down. There's no movement at the shoulder. There's not even really movement at the elbow. This is just the forearm movement. A few more times. Think of moving your left shoulder blade down your back as though the shoulder blade tip at the bottom could move a little bit toward your sacrum. So you really feel connected to your whole back line. And the next time that you turn your palm to face down, keep it down. Maybe put a little extra external rotation into the upper arm bone. And then turn your fingers back. Turn your fingers down. As though you could actually touch the inner forearm. Turn your fingers back. As you do this, you're looking at your left wrist crease and making sure that your thumb isn't leading the thumb and the pinky finger are in alignment with each other. The fingers are bright and spreading, spreading, spreading. Really bright hand, yes. Pinky finger and thumb in alignment. So the wrist crease is parallel to the front edge of that mat. Do this one more time. Turn your fingertips back. Pull back. Take a breath in, shoulder blade down the back, and then point your fingertips down and really pull toward you. And then let it go and release. You should feel that work in that arm, maybe roll the shoulder a little. When I go into the next side, I'll do this facing you. So you get a slightly different angle. You reach your right arm forward, press your fingertips forward, turn your palm to face up, and plug your shoulder head back into your body. So you can really feel this dynamic reaching and anchoring. 
and take your left hand around your upper right arm. And I don't know about you, but my left arm is a little tired. So you'll notice that. Draw your shoulder blades down your back as though the, the two bottom tips of the shoulder blades could narrow toward your sacrum. So you feel the entire shoulder blade band stable and supported. And then palm faces down, palm faces up. We'll do this a bunch of times. No movement at the upper arm bone, no movement at the shoulder head. You're in an energetic external rotation. Put half a mind into your legs. Notice if your psoas has started to try to hold you up. Can you just relax your leg bones a little deeper toward the ground and know that your spine is holding you rather than your hips? So just an energetic softening at that crease. The next time you point your fingers down, pause. And again, palm faces up, palm faces back. Make sure that the wrist crease is parallel, let's say to the hip crease. Pinky finger and thumb in alignment with each other. Shoulder head is plugging in as the forearm is pressing away. And each time you reach back, you're going to that edge. Each time you reach down, you're trying to touch. You're really feeling that awakening. Good. Point your hand back and press, press. Right through the hand, really bright through the fingers. Point your hand back down. Again, bright. And then release it. A little bit of rolls through the shoulders. Okay, so for the next movement, let's come forward. Keep your blanket where it is. Come on to your knees and have your knees hip width apart and then lower to your forearms. Spread your fingers wide. I'm going to add a few movements to this sequence. The first movement is let's bring your knees together so your ankles touch and your knees touch. Feel your leg bones so that hip crease again, gently pressing back. And then feel for the front of your pelvis, not dropping down your legs, but actually moving a little bit forward. Kind of like you could tighten a belt at the front of your pelvis. So those two bones move a little bit toward your, toward your spine. So your knees are together, your feet are together, your femur heads are energetically moving back. Your deep navel is energetically moving forward. And even that action, you can feel the work here. Now let's put a little focus into the arms. Spread your fingers wide. Pick up your elbows two inches. And with your elbows picked up, pick up your thumb and pointer finger. And use that pickup of the inner hand, inner wrist, to really turn your triceps back like we just did with the arms. But you're exaggerating this wrapping back of the upper arm bone. And keep that action, but send your thumb and pointer finger back to the mat. Keep that wrapping back. It's almost as though you can hollow out the deep inner armpit, right? So keep that wrapping back and set your elbows back down. And then again, push into the hands, push into the thumb and pointer finger, pick your elbows up an inch or two. Keep that wrapping back. Now, no need on this side to lift the inner hand. You can stay anchored in that, in that end range of the spiral there. Lower your elbows down. Do that again. Pick your elbows up an inch or two. Continue to wrap your triceps back. Lower your elbows down. This time, hold your elbows down. Keep that inner thumb rooting. Keep your spine straight and shift forward like there's a little cliff edge over your fingertips that you're trying to look into. Keep pressing into your elbows and send your hips back. Yes, yeah, so inhale, shift forward all the way, shift back all the way. And when you shift back, there's a press of the elbows and a press of the inner hand. Shift forward all the way. Notice in the end ranges of your movement, if your tailbone wants to kind of tuck under, you're not letting that happen, right? You're keeping your spine straight, 
So the head never droops. The eyes are actually almost moving forward. So there's a forward and back action without a down component. Forward without down, back without down. And we'll just do that one more time, come forward. And when you come back, you'll pause, pause. Take your left hand onto the right forearm. Let your forehead rest onto your left wrist. And then push into the right elbow and send your sitting bones back a little more. So this is more of a stretch. It's kind of like a quarter dog, actually. Sort of like a downward facing dog, but on a quarter side, just for that right side. Look forward, release your left forearm. Bring it parallel to the edge of your mat. Bring your right hand across the bottom elbow, forehead onto the right wrist, and press back. So the left elbow presses into the ground. The sitting bone is moving back. The outer arm is energetically wrapping toward the earth. And actually, you're just giving yourself a stretch without your neck being involved at all. Give that a breath. And once you have that, release the right forearm. Keep your elbows where they are, but bring your hands into a prayer position. The pinky fingers can be on the ground. Come forward, same movement that you did a moment ago, and go back. There's a slightly different, just ever so slightly different range. And what I'd like you to think about doing in the next few movements is maybe keeping your hands on the ground, or maybe picking your hands up, like you're saying your goodnight prayers. And when you come up and forward, the chin actually crests over your fingertips. The hands don't change their position. There's more of a lift when you're coming forward. So you're really trying to get your sternum and your chin up toward the hands and then back. And just a couple more like that. So if you need to lower the hands halfway, that's okay. If the hands need to be on the ground for a time, that's okay. Eventually the fingertips point up to the sky and you're really lifting over. Do that just last, last one. Coming back, release your forearms. Forearms are parallel to each other. Now let's forget about the shoulders for a second. The head is in line with the heart so it's not dropping. Bring your right knee to the right. Return it. Bring your left knee to the left. Return it. Right knee to right. If you have a block handy, not needed, but you can place a block against your sacrum. And, and it's not because it's doing anything. It just tells you if your pelvis is tipping. And if your pelvis tips, your block will fall off, right? So you're not rolling your hip toward your moving knee. You're keeping your hips absolutely square to the ground. And maybe the knee won't lift as high. That's okay. When you bring the knee back, don't let it just drop back. As carefully as you're sending it away, send it back in. So you can actually wake up that return action. It's almost like you're working the adduction there. Definitely the abduction, but also the adduction. One more time to each side. You can feel your deep belly starting to wake up in that. And then return the knee. You can move the block out to the side. And then sit back for just a moment. Shoulders move down the back. Good. Give yourself a moment of break. And let's come forward onto our hands and knees, and then we'll, we'll come onto our back after this last stabilizing movement. Bring your knees hip width apart. The pelvis feels stable, the shoulder blades feel stable. Pick up the inner thumb and pointer finger and wrap your upper arms back. Then root thumb and pointer finger down, keeping that energy at the upper arms. Half cat cow. Don't move your chest. Keep your head in line with your heart. Tip your tailbone to the sky. So only the pelvis will move now. I'd like you to really think of pushing into the tops of your feet. And as you exhale, wrap your tailbone toward the backs of your knees without taking the rest of your spine with it. So the chest stays still. The movement is a lift at the front of the pelvis toward the navel. 
and then we continue tailbone to the sky. So really only the pelvis is moving. You can feel that place where the rib cage part of the spine, the thoracic spine really wants to go into the movement and you're teasing that edge. So tailbone up, tailbone down, really no movement at the chest and just do that one more time. Being firm at the top of the foot helps especially when you tuck under, because it deepens you into your belly. And then bring your pelvis back to neutral, so the pelvis is facing the ground. Don't move your pelvis at all. Try to do the same thing with your upper back. Shoulder blades move down to send the heart forward and through the window of the arms. Now, without bringing your pelvis into the movement, round your upper back. Maybe your head will even look at your knees. The pelvis stays square to the ground. Push into your thumb and pointer finger. Shoulder blades move into that narrow V toward your sacrum. Heart through and up. The movement is a little smaller than you even might, might think. And do that a couple more times. Moving slowly. I find that the upper chest half, I have to go much more slowly because the ribs are a better scaffolding, a better structure. So there's just more resistance. And what you'll do the next time you round is that the whole spine round. So now the pelvis and the upper back can flex. And we'll ripple through. Start at your tailbone, feel your low back arch, and then the upper back arches. Start at your tailbone round. So this is a rippling cat-cow, feeling the whole spine now moving, but the whole part is awake. Tailbone up, ripple through. Round your back and pause. Pause your back rounded. Send your hips toward your heels with the rounded spine and pull your fingertips toward your knees. So it's not so much a dropping toward the ground. You stay lifted at the front of the pelvis and you feel your fingertips just grazing back toward your knees. Should give you a really deep stretch. And then let the spine roll up. Hook your thumbs. Stand on your shins and press your arms back. We did a lot of shoulder stability here. Change the hook of the thumbs and again press back. Tops of the feet are anchoring. Tailbone is moving into the body, so you can actually wake up your glutes, and especially those lower glutes. And as you exhale, pull your elbows down, drop your chin toward your chest, and send your thumbs into the space behind you. Then bring your hands to your low back sacrum, so the pinky finger is actually hooked toward the tailbone. And with your pinky fingers, draw your tailbone deeper into your body, Engage your glutes and lift up your low belly. Elbows move toward each other behind your heart. As you exhale, release. Come off of your blanket and come onto your back. So that was kind of a little prep pose for our back bends and we're gonna go right into our back bends here. You'll bring your hands onto the front of your pelvis for just a moment so your shoulders can settle into the earth. And then release your hands alongside your hips. Inhale, arch your low back. Low back comes off the ground. Exhale, round and tuck. And this is sort of like that half cat cow because only the pelvis is moving. As you continue to arch and round your low back, we're going to think of two things. The first thing is, I want your bottom floating ribs really attached to the mat. For me, even after doing this movement for a long time, that's still a challenge. So really think of keeping those bottom floating ribs connected to the mat, even when you arch your low back. Give that a couple of rounds to feel into. Your movement may not be as big, that's okay. And then the second thing that we're going to add is instead of using your hip flexors to round your low back to the ground, I'd like you to think of your inner thighs. 
So from the inner knee to the inner groin, you're pulling up. Pubic bone moves to navel to round your low back to the ground. So inhale, arch, floating ribs stay down. Exhale, round and tuck. Now, if you're pushing into your feet to round your low back to the ground, you're probably using your hip flexors. So soften your feet. From the inner knee to the inner groin, pull back, pelvic floor, mula bandha, low belly. And, and then take your block between your knees and do it a few times, and that should actually help. You're not crushing your block, you're just holding it there, but you're feeling that inner thigh line helping you in the posterior tilt. And we're actually going to keep our block there as we go into pelvic clocks or circles. So right now you're imagining a marble rolling from your tailbone to your low back. But in a moment, that marble is going in a big circle. So the next time you arch your low back and your imaginary marble is at your tailbone, hold it there. Shift your weight into your left hip. Shift your weight into your low back. Shift your weight into your right hip. And then back to your tailbone. So that was a bit like a diamond. Now we're going to smooth it out. Go to your left, around your low back, go to the right and back to the tailbone. If it's hard to keep your block between your knees, you don't need to have it there. The block just encourages the inner thighs to be a part of the movement. But there's more mobility, there's actually more range when you remove the block. So you can play around with both. But certainly the priority is getting your circle as big as possible. So really kind of if you're baking, right, you, you want to get the edges of the bowl. It's the same thing here, really get the edges. Roll that imaginary marble about the size of a large dinner plate all the way around, all the way around. So once you have that, maybe you can always return a block between your inner thighs. I find that with, when I have the block there, there's more of a strengthening action happening at my deep abdominals. Whereas when I don't have it there, there's more of a stretching happening. So each day you kind of decide which one you want to do. When you get to your tailbone, change directions, go to the right, wrap all the way around, left, all the way around. Between 10 and 15 circles to each side. As big a circle as you can. Notice your eyes and your jaw. So energetically, the pelvis and the jaw relate. Try to soften your jaw, the deep, deep hinge at the back of the jaw. Soften the sides of your eyes. Soften your shoulder heads. Let the movement really be here at the pelvis. Couple more. If you moved the block out, place your block back in. And coming back to center, with your block between your thighs, interlace your hands behind your head. Get the two halves of your pelvis heavy. Get your pubic bone in the front of your body in line with your hip bones so you're not tucking into that posterior tilt. Tailbone is heavy on the earth. Pubic bone and frontal hip bones are even to the sky. Hands behind the head, inhale. Exhale, lift up your head and chest and hold. So now you can actually feel this wrapping action of the deep belly. Rather than curling forward to look at your knees and your block, I'd like you to actually pick your head up to look at the sky. So you're still lifted off of the ground. You can see your elbows at the corners of your vision. So the elbows aren't flat to the earth, they're kind of cupping up. But the head and the hands are pressing into one another. Now, rather than crunching up, can you send the top of your head back away from your tailbone? So like you're lengthening your spine toward the back of your mat. And that's the area we're going to massage. So 
Press your tailbone down. And then lower your head just to hover right off the earth and pick it back up again. Go back. Lengthen. Lengthen to lower and hover. And pick up. Head and hands press so you can really use this lengthening action. Lower, hover, and lift. And do that two more times. Lower, hover. Tailbone heavy. Hip crease heavy. Last time. Lift. Take your thumbs to that hip crease. Again, you're not pushing into it. You're feeling this energetic wrapping of the outer hip crease toward the pinky toe side of your foot. Curl a little deeper. Relax your femur head so you don't have to grip there. The work is at the belly, not at the psoas. Hands behind the head. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, twist to the left. Pause. Push your right hip bone into the earth. So the pelvis is on the ground the whole time. The right side of the rib cage is trying to touch that left hip bone. Inhale, come to center. Lengthen your head back. Exhale, wrap over to the right. Press your left hip crease down. Press your left hip bone down. And then wrap the left side of the rib cage toward the right. You're not crushing your block, you're just holding it firm. Come to center, lengthen. Exhale, wrap into the twist to the left. Back to center. Exhale, wrap to the right, twist. Even though the upper chest is moving, most of your attention is at keeping your pelvis anchored. That actually changes the integrity of the exercise. So as your pelvis stays firm on the ground, especially the opposite hip from the direction you're twisting, you can really feel that deep waking up at the pelvis. We'll do this just one more time to each side. And the next time that you twist to the left, you'll hold it. So. Twist over to the left and hold it. Take your hands to the outside of your left leg. You might have to pick the foot up for a second to grab, but you're really grabbing the outside and you're using your hands to pull yourself up. Your bottom thumb comes to your hip crease. And same thing we did a moment ago, you're turning that outer hip toward the pinky toe, but the top hand is pulling toward you. So push bottom away, pull top toward. Maybe you've lifted a little deeper into your twist. Hold that twist, hold your block. Press your right hip down. One hand comes behind the head, don't lose it. Other hand comes behind the head, hold. Little pulses, five, four, three, massage, two, one, come to center. Twist to the right, hold. Hands come behind the leg. And I, need, I like to pick my foot up for a second to really grab the back of my foot, my thigh. And then I set my foot back down. My top hand is pulling me up and over into the twist. Take your bottom hand, your right thumb into your right hip crease and wrap it toward the pinky toe. So bottom hand pushes away, top hand pulls toward. Once you feel that push pull at the arms and you're at the deepest place you could possibly be, push your left hip down more and then one hand behind the head. Other hand behind the head, little pulses, five, four, three, two, one, come to center, lengthen and lower, holy cow. Your belly is awake, push into your feet, hands by the sides of your hips on the mat, lift up bridge pose. Tailbone tips up into the body. Rather than thinking of engaging your entire glute body, Think of engaging the bottom edge of your glutes, kind of like you're holding a paper clip between that glute crease and the hamstrings, and that's the place that you're trying to squeeze. So as you hold that paper clip a little tighter, send your knees forward. Send your knees forward in space. Hold your block. As you exhale, Lower down one bone at a time. Notice where your shoulders want to get light. Go slowly. Keep your shoulders really heavy as you place each bone on the ground like a little pearl necklace, placing one piece down and then the other. Take a breath in. 
Exhale, come right back up into bridge pose, right back up. Tip your tailbone up and into your body, find lower glutes, send your knees forward, shoulders press down. And again, let's roll down, keeping those shoulders heavy, placing one bone and then the other onto the earth. Long strand coming down, shoulders stay very heavy. Upper arm bones anchor. Roll back up into your bridge pose. Inhale. This time hold your bridge pose. Take your right hip, rotate it up an inch higher than your left hip. Tailbone is moving toward the knees. Come back to center. Pick your left hip up an inch higher than your right hip. Come back to center. Pick your right hip up back to center. Pick your left hip up, back to center. Pick your right hip up, hold. Hold the rotation, hold the tilt at your pelvis. Tip your tailbone higher toward your block. Keep your pelvis as it is and roll down the left side of your spine again like you're placing that strand down one piece at a time. When you get to the bottom, you're gonna take a U-turn all the way around. Pick your left hip up an inch and drop your right hip down. And then roll up one bone at a time. Feel that you're coming up the right side of your spine. Balance everything out at the top. Find even, I know your legs are working for you, but that's okay. Pick your left hip up an inch. Hold the rotation. Lower down the right side one bone at a time. When you get to the bottom, take a U-turn. Remember that imaginary marble? Go around your tailbone, half circle to the left. Right hip picks up. Lift up the left side. Balance it out at the top. Let's do that one more time. Right hip up. Lower down the left side. Tailbone is still lengthening. Take a U-turn, left sitting bone, tailbone, right sitting bone. Left hip rises, pick up the right side. Balance everything out. Tip your left hip up, lower down the right side. Go all the way around, pick your right hip up, come up. Balance everything out at the top, hold. Tip your tailbone a little higher, soften your toes. Right? <laughs> soft toes, heels push down and back toward the shoulders. Shoulders stay heavy, lower down one bone at a time. Okay, take your block out. I know you love that block, <laughs> so we don't, we're going to get it out of the way now for a moment. And bring your knees into tabletop, bring your hands up, turn your palms to face each other, and place your palms between your knees. So a moment ago you had the block, now you have the hands. You're still squeezing the midline. And we did this on our, hand, on our forearms and knees. You're gonna keep your left knee still and bring your right knee to the right without rolling to the right. Come back to center. Take your left knee to the left. So the last movement we did, the last exercise we did, we were purposefully rolling the pelvis. You're now stabilizing that. You're now keeping your pelvis purposefully anchored and challenging the anchor, right? You're squeezing the still leg into that hand. So it's not about the moving piece. This is about the stabilizing piece. How far can you bring the moving piece and stay stable? It may not be as far as you think. You may actually start to wobble toward that knee before you think you do. So test that edge, play that range. Do that one more time, your belly is awake. It is helping you. It is holding you steady. Come back to center, set your left foot down, cross your right ankle over your left thigh, thumbs to the hip crease. Again, you're not pushing in, you're wrapping, toward the outer line. 
so your sitting bones get a little heavier, and then pick your left knee up. The knee is directly over the hip. Turn the right toes all the way back toward the knee, so the toes are looking at the knee, and then release your hands again. Shift your legs to the left so your right hip picks up off of the ground. And then pull it back. Think of the right hip drawing an arc up and over to the left. Press down your shoulder. Come back. Come up and over to the left. And then back. Come up and over to the left and then hold, hold. Squeeze that top ankle into the bottom knee. Push the two together. Your left hand is right there. You're going to take your hand to your ankle and slowly guide the left knee and the top ankle until the right foot is actually touching the earth. The right knee is pointing to the sky. I want you to take your right hand to that knee, maybe not the knee joint itself, but a few inches above it, and just press your thigh bone forward. Yeah, this is such an amazing movement. This is this movement is all about releasing the outer glutes and the deep piriformis, the deep external rotators. In fact, you don't even have to have your hand against your knee. You can even bring your hand right up against the hip crease, anywhere along that top thigh, pressing it away. And rather than uh, dropping your tailbone toward the earth, Remember your bridge pose action? In fact, think of your tailbone actually scooping a little forward away from your low back, and it's like you've got a little lift at your tailbone. So you're thinking of really lengthening as you release. If you want to move dynamically, you can push and release a couple of times, kind of a little press through the hand and release situation. kind of nice to do these little butterfly movements. The left hand is really kind of holding the foot on the ground. And you can keep doing that, or you can also release your right arm and drop your right elbow into a cactus shape next to your shoulder. Look at your right hand, take a breath in, and it's that Uddiyana Bandha, it's that drawing lightly back and up through your low belly that'll actually deepen the stretch. So it's the exhalation. I'm gonna offer one last variation here. It's totally optional. In fact, I think that just working Uddiyana Bandha is really all you need to do. But if you're having a day where your, your quadriceps are tight, walk your bottom foot back, back, back. Take your right hand down to the bottom ankle. So you're binding both ankles and then press your knees away from you. Top knee presses away from the heart. Bottom knee presses into the ground. So then this way you can actually feel that bottom quadricep. Send that bottom knee into the earth. And in fact, think of that little imaginary paper clip on the left side, glute. Engage that. Then you have an active stretch at the quadricep. Release your bottom knee. Release your right elbow. And then just tip your top knee onto your bottom knee so you're in a supine twist. Come back to center. Okay, balance everything out for just a moment. Take your right knee up, cross your left ankle over it. So you're wrapping that outer hip crease down. You can take your thumb there for just a moment. And then release your hands. Flex the left toes back toward the knee. Dorsiflex. And as you exhale, tip over to the right, just halfway. Knee and ankle squeeze together and pull back. So it's like the left hip is drawing a half circle or a quarter circle up and over to the right. And then back to the earth. 
Again, over to the right. You might even feel this as abdominal work because it is. And back. Come up and over to the right and hold, hold. Your right hand is there. You're going to grab a hold of your ankle and glide the, glide the unit of the legs to the earth. So now the left foot is pressing down into the ground. Take your left hand to your top knee. And again, maybe not at the knee joint, but somewhere on that thigh bone, you're pressing it away. You can go right into these little pulses. We're going to give it that same exploration that we did on the other side. Is your bottom leg kind of gripping? Can you actually try to relax your bottom leg? When you do, you feel your jaw releasing as well. So the work doesn't need to be in the places that it's not required. You're going to keep your work in your left hip and out of your jaw and your bottom leg. Rather than letting your tailbone kind of droop toward the ground, keep lengthening your tailbone through and a little up. You can keep doing this movement. Take a breath in, exhale with that light Uddiyana Bandha, maybe release your left elbow in line with your shoulder. There's that 90 degree angle at the elbow like a half cactus. Maybe look over at your left hand and then start to walk your bottom leg back if you want to. Hand comes to the ankle. Now you've bound both of your ankles. Your top knee is pressing away from your heart. Your bottom knee is pushing into the ground, into the ground. A few breaths like this. Imagine that paper clip at the right glute crease. So the tailbone is engaging you. The exhalation is an important part of this. It helps comb pressure out of the pelvic floor. Helps to deepen the stretch. Release your bottom knee back. Take your top knee onto your bottom knee and just drop into the twist. We're going to do one more back movement. Come back to center. Just give yourself a gentle squeeze through your knees. You're going to need both your block and your blanket for this movement. Place your blanket to the bottom edge of your mat. If you're on hardwood, the blanket's going to work really well. But if you're on carpet, you're going to need something that slides, like a magazine or paper plates or something. And then you're coming back onto your back, but with your feet on the blanket and your torso from your tailbone to the top of your head, actually all the way up on your sticky mat. Then you're gonna lift and place your block under your sacrum. Okay, so these are our glute slides. So we need our glutes. And, and here you're in a classic bridge pose. Your knees are actually pointing straight forward. Your heels are in line with your sitting bones. Nothing is turning out. You're really tracking. Your arms come down. And, and just give yourself a moment to feel the support of your block under your sacrum. Not up by your tailbone, but under your sacrum. And what you'll do is push your arm bones down, press your shoulders down, and slide your feet forward. Then pull your feet back. Now, I notice this right away. I can feel this the moment I do it even with the block under my sacrum. Eventually, you don't have a block under your sacrum, but we don't need to worry about that right now. In fact, what you can think of if you're, if you're feeling strong enough to start to move away from needing the block, you can actually tip your tailbone so high up that your pelvis gets light on your block and you can continue to do this. And then maybe your pelvis can lift a millimeter off of your block eventually. So you can always have the block there in case something gets a little grippy. It's right there for you to, to put more weight on, but you're toggling that weight. How much do you want your pelvis to rest on your block? How little do you want your pelvis to rest on your block? 
If you don't have a wall there stopping your feet movement, as, as I do, right, you might even take your feet all the way forward until your legs are more or less straight and then pull back. So you can increase the range of the slide. You can increase the support or decrease the support of the block. You can lift so high in your bridge that there's nothing underneath you and just go an inch. So you're playing around with a couple of variables and maybe you just do this, I don't know, two more times. It's hard. So we don't need to do this a million times. 15 is kind of enough. And then lower back onto the block. Oh yeah. Hamstrings slash glutes, but your hamstrings might even Charlie horse. You know, it is so much hamstring work. That, that is hamstring work. Probably hamstring work first and glutes like a close runner up, right? So now what you're gonna do is tip your tailbone up towards your knees, re-engage those glutes and hamstrings, and as you lift off of your block, move it out to the side and lower down one bone at a time. Hug your right knee into your chest, straighten your left leg forward. Come into half happy baby, and as you come into half happy baby, Take your block to the outside of your left hip. Press your left side pelvis down. Squeeze your right knee toward the earth. You're gonna play around with how high your block is. It's either gonna be medium height or even highest height. Bring your right knee over and onto your block. And the reason it could be the highest height is because I don't want your hand pushing your knee down. I'd like your knee to actually engage that inner thigh line and press itself down. So you might be starting at that highest height to really feel that engaging, and then you can lower it a little. Think of lifting the column of your head back. Come back to center. Take the block to the outside of the right hip, straighten your right leg, hug your left knee in, half happy baby. Roll that right inner thigh lightly down, press the right hip bone down. And then bring your left knee across and onto the block. Highest height or medium height. Not so much a push of the hand to get the knee on the block, but a press of the inner knee inner thigh line so you can lengthen your spine come back to center set your feet onto the earth and hug your knees into your chest then roll up your spine Come on to your hands and knees. I just want to do one last movement because we did so much careful stabilization of the shoulders and the pelvis that I want to integrate the two. Tuck your toes under and press into downward facing dog. In a certain way, we've actually been building to this. You, know, you don't often think of down dog as the peak pose, but in this case, it kind of is, right? You're pressing into your hands. You're wrapping your triceps down, hollowing out the deep armpit. Root your thumbs down and send your femur heads back. Stretch your hamstrings by sending your heels back. And shift forward into plank pose, and here's where you can really feel the hamstring glute connection. Tailbone moves down into the body. Thigh bones press toward the ceiling. So the leg bones, the hamstrings, the glutes are actually helping. Pubic bone moves toward the heart. Heart moves through the window of the arms. Eyes look forward. Can you feel everything you've worked? Push into the thumb and pointer finger. Press back to downward facing dog. And we'll just do that two more times, and that's, that's, that's it. Shift forward to plank pose. Wrap your triceps back. 
pull your palms towards your toes. Send the heart a little up. Squeeze the thigh bones a little up. Knit the frontal hip bones toward each other. Let your low belly move up. Press back. Last time. Last time. Shift to plank pose. Wrap your triceps back. Root your thumbs down. Put the pieces together. Thigh bones to the sky. Tailbone like a sandwich meeting it. Belly engaging. Shoulder blades moving into that narrow V toward the sacrum. Press back, down dog. Lower your knees, cross your legs, and you can either lie on your back for Shavasana or you can come into a seated position here, just as you started, kind of a seated position. Take your thumbs to your hip crease. Whether you're on your back or you're seated, if you're seated, it's especially important. And just feel for that gentle releasing of the femur head. And then let your arms go. Feel your spine holding itself. Head is in line with the heart. Heart is in line with the pelvis. You don't need to work to find alignment. And so you can relax, especially the extremities, the shoulders, the hips. Give yourself a few deep breaths here. If you wanna do a longer breath practice, you may. Inhale through your nose, exhale through your nose and find these deep rhythmic breaths. Massaging the subtle body with your breath. Bring your hands together in front of your heart. Honoring yourself, the miracle of your body, your ability to stay curious. Curiosity is the great antidote to stagnation, to anxiety, to tamasic energy, that which holds us down. Curiosity is what lifts us back into our heart. So honor that. Honor your ability to notice what you notice and to fall in love with what you notice. That's the whole practice of yoga. And let's rub our palms. One hand over the heart and then the other, breathe it in. Open your mouth, exhale. Atta Yoga Anushasanam Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirabha. Here begins your practice. Namaste.